In this video, we're going to go over the class data analysis for Lab 4. So, we got a couple things to do. Our first task is to do mean and standard deviation of vertical jump height for both the area under the curve and the time method. So, let's go find that jump height, vertical jump height, and we'll do average. And then we'll also do standard de uh, ST deviation of the population for that. Cool. And then we'll, I'll just go ahead and copy and paste these for the jump height as well. Awesome. Uh, th then you can just copy and paste a small table into here. I may update this to have a table by the time I have this video up, um, but uh, I would put that into here. Now we're gonna go ahead and do box and whisker plots. Um, we'll have to do what we did before and uh, in lab two and move the data around just a little bit to get this to look appropriate. Um, so that's gonna be of the jump height to compare area of the curve and time methods. Don't include the mean and standard deviation. And we'll just uh, put this right about he here. Make sure you copy. I did just a regular control or command V. Uh, make sure you do paste values for that. And this is the area of the curve method. This is jump. All right, then we'll do this again. Again, don't include the mean standard deviation. Paste values, and this will be the time method. All right, so we'll go ahead and do that. Highlight all of that, hit insert, histogram, and we got this chart jump height by um, method, we'll just call it, by calculation method. And we got this, you know, lot of space between zero and the first value or the, or the bottom of the, of the quote-unquote whisker or the box plot. I like calling them box plots, all this, although it call, calls this uh, um, box and whisker. We'll go ahead and set this at a a little bit higher value, we'll go with 0.3. Cool. So these overlap very well. This already kind of tells us that eh, these two are pretty related. We're doing pretty good. Or between the two methods, they're pretty close. That already sort of tells it for us. Um, but we'll go ahead and do some of the st statistical analysis for this. Um, make sure you go ahead and do your um, null hypothesis. Now we're going to do a ANOVA two-factor without replication on jump height. Before we can do that though, we need to get this into um, a specific format. Uh, it's, it's not a favorite format or anything like that. It's kind of annoying, but uh, we'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to copy this. I can't use what I had already over here. We're going to have to make something new, and that's okay. We'll, we'll We'll play play ball with it. We'll play by its rules. Um, actually, I'll just go one down, paste those values on in, and then I'm going to take the jump height from over here, and then copy and paste it on in here. I'm going to name these. This is the time jump height, and this is the area under the curve curve, jump height, and then we're going to put subject here, and we can actually just go ahead and copy and paste all of our subjects, whoops, forgot the shift button, there we go, and we'll paste them on in here as well. This is kind of a weird format, weird setup, um, but this is what Excel wants, so we do what it wants or else, it, or else we can't get done what we want to get done. So go ahead, data analysis, and uh, up at the top here we got ANOVA two-factor without replication. And let's go ahead and 
highlight all of that. We've got labels, our alpha level is 0 0.05. And I'm going to do new worksheet. All right, so we get this big table here. So it shows us the, the sum and variation and average and variance for each subject. Um, then it to tells us overall for each method, area of the curve and the time method. And then it gives us this ANOVA table here. Um, so we have our p-value both here. Um, make sure you do report, report both for this. Oh, well, really you only need the columns one technically, not the rows, because the rows are by each, each subject and we don't much care for each subject in this case. Um, uh, just go ahead and report, report both I'd say though just to be safe. And now we come to the part where we're going to do a uh, interclass correlation coefficient. Um, this part is going to be a little bit more, a um, little bit different. We can't, we can use Excel to get this, but we needed this table for it, um, the Synova table. And it's a little bit long for me to remember the exact formula, so I actually have something pulled up here. Um, it's just the, the link that is on there. It may not be in the final copy that you guys will see, um, but it's pulled from you know this website if you want to pull it up yourself. Um, and we're going to calculate the intraclass correlation coefficient. Um, real quick about the intraclass correlation coefficient, it's typically called a rater reliability met uh, assessment method, where we're looking at people that are rating something like a judge, in, judges, sorry, in a uh, gymnastics competition or in a science science fair or in, in whatever it may be that's sort of subjective. Uh, now none of none of our methods have any subjectivity to them, but we want to know based on these two methods, the area of the curve method and the time method, how reliable is the time method compared to the area of the curve? Area of the curve being our gold standard, so to speak. So we want to see how reliable it is in comparison. Um, so we're going to have to basically type in this little formula right here. Um, now our numbers are things don't match up exactly because we're on, at least I am, on different um, uh, columns. So I'm going to have to type this one in manually. So let's go equals parenthesis and this is K23 and I can see that the blue, I love that these things are at least color coded, that makes it much easier for me mean square right here, subtract from k25 and then we'll divide that by another parenthesis k23 plus j24 so j24 should be that purple, yep, and multiply that by k25 then we add in parenthesis J24 plus 1 multiply by we do K24 minus K25 close parenthesis divided by J23 plus 1 and then two parenthesis to end it so that's a, a little long I'll leave this up for just a second more just so you can see it if you're using my exact ones, exact um, uh, spreadsheet and whatnot. All right, so we got a reliability index of uh, 0.99, and that's very good, excellent, rater, uh, excellent reliability, um, which is pretty much expected, at least based on my data, this is expected given how close everything was. Um, looking over it, uh, let's just take a look at the um, absolute error. So these are, you know, 0 0.048 meters per second. So that's very small. So we're talking 4.8 centimeters per second. Uh, dif different between uh, and takeoff velocity between the two. This is jump height, which is about 0 0.019 um, meters. So about uh, 1.9 meter. Uh, sorry, 1.9 centimeters, or eight millimeters here and so this is you know we're doing pretty good when we're talking differences uh, like that um, not bad at all
Uh, so you may be wondering why we're not looking at like a regular correlation coefficient and how this might differ. Correlation, we're looking at the relationship between the two, um, two, two things, how linearly positive or negative they are. In this case, we're just looking to see, do they match up very well? Do these two methods, again, match up closely? Um, so, that, so that's why we have to use something called a cor uh, intra-class correlation coefficient versus a regular correlation coefficient. This one may not have been or may not be taught in your um, stats course, but this is used to assess different methods. All right, we got uh, just a couple more things. Oh, actually, one more thing. We're going to do the mean absolute error for the area under the curve uh, and time method for um, for these. I didn't say specifically. Let me just type that in here. We'll do it for um, for we'll do it for all three jump height. I'll actually put these in, in order. Velocity, jump height, and poten uh, potential energy. All right. So let's go ahead and all we're going to do, we're just going to do the mean, the average. We're not going to do standard deviations for these. We could do standard deviations and if I remember correctly, they should tell us like a number of percent, an amount of precision. Um, but again, we're just looking for the means here. That's like, this would be equivalent to what's called the mean absolute error. Um, overall between the two methods and this tells us about on average how far we can expect these two methods to deviate in both jump height velocity and potential energy and that's for these um, the three things that we're reporting at least so go ahead and make sure you report these uh, and that is about it um, again this is point uh, we can expect it to be about 1.3 centimeters off 3.9 centimeters per second or 0.039 meters per second and about 9.7 joules of potential energy off. So that's, we're doing pretty good between these two. Um, whatever your numbers might be, it may be different. We'll have to see. Um, otherwise, uh, if you do have any questions, please contact your lab instructor or myself and I'll see you in the next video.